Good afternoon, all. This one is a, so far, a three-parter. The last days of Samuel and the days of King David. And there's a lot of information here. And we're going to go through it slowly. And shouldn't be too many questions afterward, but we will entertain some after each section. This was brought on because so many asked about what happened with the ark at the Philistines. That's our first question today. What shall we do with the ark of Yahweh Elohim? When the Philistines first captured the ark of the covenant, they first thought it was a great victory. They put it in the temple of their god, Dagon as a trophy with the message that their Yahweh Elohim was greater than got that wrong they put it in the temple of their God Dagon as a trophy with the message that their God Dagon was greater than Yahweh Elohim. But because Elohim glorified himself in the temple of Dagon, then by striking the Philistines with plagues when, in, in whatever city the ark would come to rest, the Philistines began to regard the ark as a burden not as a trophy. We will begin in 1 Samuel, the sixth chapter, the first verse. First Samuel, the sixth chapter, the first verse, starting off. The Ark of Elohim was in the country of the Philistines seven months. Note that seven. Verse two, and the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners and said, what shall we do with the Ark of Yahweh Elohim? Tell us with what we was we shall send in it, it to its place. They said, if they send the ark of Elohim of Israel, do not send it empty, but by all means return him a guilt offering. Why do that if you don't believe in him? Then you will be healed, and it will be known to you why his hand does not turn away from you. And they said, what is the guilt offering that we shall return to him? They answered, five golden tumors and five golden mice, according to the number of Yahweh Elohims of the Philistines. According to the number of gods of the Philistines, I meant. For the same plague was on all of you 
and on your lords. Hold your finger here at verse 5 and go down to 1 Samuel, the fifth chapter, the first verse. We know that the plague involved tumors. First, first Samuel, the fifth chapter, the first verse. When the Philistines captured the Ark of Yahweh Elohim, they brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Then the Philist Philistines took the Ark of Elohim and brought it into the house of Dagon and set it up alongside Dagon. That was their first mistake. And when the people of Ashdod rose early the next day, behold, Dagon had fallen face forward on the ground before the ark of Yahweh Elohim. So they took Dagon and put him back in his place. They had to take him up themselves. That's a bad sign. They took Dagon up and put him back in his place. They did. And he didn't do it for himself. <laughs> That's a bad sign. If you're counting on this God for your own substance anyway. Verse 4. But when they, they, in, when they rose early on the next morning, behold, Dagon had fallen face forward on the ground again before the ark of Yahweh Elohim. And the head of Dagon and both his hands were lying cut off on the threshold. <laughs> Only the trunk of Dagon was left to him. This is why the priests of Dagon and all who enter the house of Dagon do not tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod to this day. Scared to stand where the ark used to be. Verse 6. The hand of Yahweh Elohim was heavy against the people of Ashdod, and he terrified and afflicted them with tumors both Ashdod and its territories. And when the men of Ashdod saw how things were, they said, the ark of the Elohim of Israel must not remain with us. <laughs> For his hand is hard against us and against Dagon, our Yahweh Elohim, our God, in other words. They didn't go by that name. They, along with most of the world, a vanilla God, in other words. That name is for anything that you call God. Verse 8. So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, what shall we do with the ark of the Elohim of Israel? They answered, let the ark of the Elohim of Israel be brought around to Gath. So they brought the ark of the Elohim of Israel there. But after they had brought it around, the hand of Yahweh Elohim was against the city, causing a great panic. And he afflicted the men of the city, both young and old, so that tumors broke out on them. So they sent the ark of Elohim to Ekron. Get out of here. <laughs> Fast as 
possible. But as soon as the Ark of Elohim came to Ekron, the people of Ekron cried out. They have brought around to us the Ark of the Elohim of Israel to kill us and our people. Verse 11. They sent, therefore, and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the Ark of the, of the Elohim of Israel and let it return to its own place so that it may not kill us and our people. For there was a deathly panic throughout the whole city. The hand of Elohim was very heavy there. The men who did not die were struck with tumors and the cry of the city went up to heaven. Return to verse 5 where your hand was. So you must make images of your tumors and images of your mice that ravage the land and give glory to the Elohim of Israel. Perhaps we will lighten his hand from off you and your gods and your land. Why should you harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts after he had dealt severely with them? Did they not send the people away and these evils departed them now then take and prepare a new cart and two milk cows on which there has never come a yoke and yoke the cow to this cart anybody that has ever been around cows knows that normally this was a bad idea. That's like riding a horse that has never been ridden before. They buck like crazy. and yoke the cows to the cart, but take their calves home, away from them. Why? Because the calves are not on a yoke. And as long as the cows are out there, the calves are out there, the mothers will follow the calves. That's why they sent the cows back home, the calves. In case you don't know that, this is not an agrarian society we live in those days, but a lot of people don't know that kind of stuff. As long as those little guys were out there, the mothers are going to be more interested in the little guys than the task they got yoked for. Verse 8. And take the ark of Elohim and place it on the cart and put it in a box at its side, the figures of gold, which you are returning to him as a guilt offering. Then send it off and let it go away. <laughs> That's the main thing. Let it go away. And watch. If it goes up on the, the way to its own land, to Beth Shemesh, then it is he who has done us harm. But if not, then we, sh we shall know that it is not his hand that struck us. It happened to us by coincidence. <laughs> Always a way out, huh? Verse 10, the men did so and took two milk cows and yoked them to the cart and shut up their calves at home. And they put the ark of Elohim 
on the card. And the box with the golden mice and the images of their tumors. Verse 12. And the cows went straight into the direction of Beth Shemesh along one highway, lowing as they went. Lowing. Right. <laughs> As they went. They turned neither to the right nor to the left. And the gods of the Philistines went after them as far as the border of Beth Shemesh. Out of here. 13. Now, the people of Beth Shemesh were reaping their harvest in the valley. And when they lifted up their eyes and saw the ark, they rejoiced to see it. The cart came into the field of Joshua of Beth Shemesh and stopped there. A great stone was there. And they split up the wood of the cart and offered the cows as a burnt offering to Yahweh Elohim. And the Levites took down the ark of Elohim and the box that was beside it, in which were the golden figures, and set them upon the great stone. And the men of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings and sacrifices on that day to Elohim. And when the five lords of the Philistines saw it, they returned that day to Ekron. These are the golden tumors that the Philistines returned as a guilt offering to Yahweh Elohim. One for Ashdod, one for Gaza, one for Ashkelon, one for Gath, one for Ekron. And the golden mice, according to the number of all the cities of the Philistines, belonging to the five lords. Both, for, both fortified cities and unwalled villages. In other words, they weren't very well protected. The great stone beside which they set down the Ark of Elohim is a witness to this day in the field of Joshua of Beth Shemesh. And he struck some of the men of Beth Shemesh because they looked upon the Ark of Elohim. And it's not here, but usually that wasn't just a look. They had designs on this thing. And he knew that. Knowing that, he struck 70 men of them, and the people mourned because Elohim had struck the people with a great blow. Verse 20, then the men of Beth Shemesh said, who is able to stand before Elohim, this holy Elohim? And who, who, whom shall he go up away from us? So they sent messengers to the inhabitants of Kiriath Jearim, saying, The Philistines have returned the Ark of Elohim. Come down and take it up to you. Continuing in 1 Samuel, the seventh chapter, the first verse. 1 Samuel, the seventh chapter, the first verse. And the men of kiriath Jerem came and took up the ark of Yahweh Elohim 
and brought it to the house of Abinadab on the hill. And they consecrated it, consecrated his son Eleazar to have charge of the Ark of Elohim. For the same day that the Ark was lodged out at Kiriath, Jerem, a long time passed, some 20 years. <laughs> Leave it there. That thing, you don't want it around the year. Leave it there. And all the house of Israel lamented after Yahweh Elohim. And Samuel said to all the house of Israel, if you are returning to Yahweh Elohim with all your heart, implied question there then put away the foreign gods and the Astaroth from among you and direct your heart to Yahweh Elohim and serve him only and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines so the people of Israel put away the balls and the Astaroth and they served Yahweh Elohim only. Again. Verse 5. Then Samuel said, Gather all Israel at Mizpah, and I will pray to Yahweh Elohim for you. So they gathered at Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before Yahweh Elohim and fasted on that day and said there we have sinned against Yahweh Elohim and Samuel judged the people of Israel and Mizpah now when the Philistines heard that the people of Israel were gathered at Mizpah the gods of the Philistines went up against Israel and when the people of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the people of Israel said to Samuel, do not cease to cry out to Yahweh, our Elohim for us, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. So Samuel took, it, took a nursing lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering. To Yahweh Elohim. And Samuel cried out to Yahweh Elohim for Israel. And Yahweh Elohim answered him. As Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to attack Israel. But Yahweh Elohim thundered with a mighty sound that day against the Philistines and threw them into confusion and they were defeated before Israel. And the men of Israel went out from Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and struck them as far as be below Bethkar. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shin and called its name Ebenezer. For he said, till now Yahweh Elohim has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued and did not again enter the territory of Israel. And the hand of Yahweh Elohim was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. If you remember, Samuel was brought to God as a child at the temple and he was set aside as a child in the temple by Hannah now we know somewhat how Yahweh Elohim does things how his bloodlines are established Verse 14, 
The cities that the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel from Ekron to Gath. And Israel delivered their territory from the hand of the Philistines. There was peace also between Israel and the Amorites. Verse 15, Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. And he went on a circuit year by year to Bethel, Gilgal, and Mishpah. And he judged Israel in all those places. Then he would return to Ramah, for his home was there. And there also he judged Israel. And he built an, ar al an altar to Yahweh Elohim. Continuing in 1 Samuel, the eighth chapter. 1 Samuel, the eighth chapter, starting at the first verse. When Samuel came, became old, he made his sons judges over Israel. Same mistakes repeated over and over and over again, as if new. Verse two, the name of his firstborn son was Joel. And the name of his second son was Abijah. These were judges at Beersheba. Yet his sons did not walk in his way. What did they do? What did they do? Same stuff. Same stuff, different day. But turned aside after gain. They took bribes and perverted justice, kind of like now in America. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Behold, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Whose ways? When you really think about it, whose ways? Mm -hmm. Yahweh's ways. Now, appoint for us a king to judge us like all the nations. <laughs> if they were any better. If they were any better. You're going to like, I'm going to like you because you're like me. That'll make, make things better for me, they thought, if that's called thinking. Now appoint for us a king to judge us like all the nations. But this thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to Yahweh Elohim. And Yahweh Elohim said to Samuel, Obey the voice of the people in all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. And it's not here, but <laughs> they did it again when the real king came. Yeshua. And they got away with it again. But that's another story for another day. Verse 8. According to all the deeds that they have done from that day, I brought them up out of Egypt, even to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so that they are doing to you. Now then, obey their voice. Only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel took all the words of Yahweh Elohim to them, people, 
who were asking for a king for him. Hold your finger there. This concept of a king among men was not a new concept to Yahweh Elohim. He'd always had that thought in the back of his mind before this. But the phrase, it is written, comes up. <laughs> Turn to Deuteronomy, the 17th chapter, the 14th verse. Deuteronomy, the 17th chapter, the 14th verse. When you come to the land that Yahweh your Elohim is giving you and, and you possess it and dwell in it and then say, <laughs> I will set a king over me like all the nations that are around me. Probably Samuel just could not look objectively at his son. Kind of like Eli before him and most of the older persons downtown and most politicians in general. He would excuse sins in them, his sons, which he would see more clearly in others. This is a common mistake people make with their family members, especially with their children. This is the wrench in human nepotism. This is why Yahweh chose the kings, essentially because he knew the family line and basically knew how they were going to be raised, opposed to human governments. Yet the reason Israel wanted a king was wrong. What's the key there? Like all the other nations. It's not a reason at all. This is just like saying, I want to be like the Joneses. like the Clintons, like the, like the Bushes, like the Obamas, like the Bidens. We often get into trouble by wanting to be like the rest of the world or the Joneses, we like say, we say. Not to whiz on anybody, but like the Joneses. Mm -hmm. We often get into trouble by wanting to be like the world or the Joneses. Mm -hmm. When we should instead be transformed into the image of Yeshua, our Messiah. The church struggles with these issues even today. Too often wanting to be like the world or the Joneses. To turn to verse 15, where your finger was. You may indeed set a king over you. Whom Yahweh your Elohim will choose. One from among your brothers you shall set it as king over you. Why? Someone that is like you will at least think of you before he does certain things. Maybe. Maybe. That's what Yahweh was thinking anyway. And you have seen, anybody seen that meme where all these trees are cut down in a field 
and they were all thinking the wooden axe had a wooden handle, he would be like them because he had a wooden handle. But the axe head wasn't made out of wood. And that's what cut down all those trees. And we weren't thinking like that. We were focusing on the handle. The handle was like us. But the point he pointed at the bottom of the trees wasn't like them. It liked them. Liked them. Liked them all the more when they were laying in front of him after he chopped them all down. And by then, all the people said, we didn't do the right thing, did we? Too late now. Too late now. Too late now. You may not put a foreign over you who is not your brother. Only he must not acquire many horses for himself or, or cause the people to return to Egypt in order to acquire many horses. Since Yahweh Elohim has said to you, you shall never return that way again. And what did they do when first chance they got to? Returned to Egypt again. Verse 17, and he shall not acquire many wives for himself. Well, I'll get to that when we get to Saul. <laughs> and David too, for that matter. Guilt, plenty of guilt to go around there. And he shall not acquire many wives for himself, lest his heart turn away. Nor shall he acquire for himself excessive silver and gold. And when he sits on the throne of his kingdom, he shall write for himself in a book a copy of this law, approved by the Levitical priests. This was the the beginning of the logging of these events of the kings. We have read about that in First Chronicles and Second Chronicles, and a lot is there. But a lot of that stuff has to be folded in with all of the other books. That's just a listing of all of the stuff they did wrong and right within the kingly system. These detailed books are most important to nail down what happened with each king and the reference to all kings to follow these. Continuing here with 1 Samuel the 8th chapter, the 10th verse. Make that the 11th verse. He said, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take, I will highlight these as you go along because you'll figure it out as you go along. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots and any arrows that find those chariots on the way will find your sons first. Verse 12, and he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest <laughs> and to 
make him make him make him his implements of war. And the equipment of his chariots. Whose chariots? Whose money was it? <laughs> Hadn't thought of that, has it? Mm hmm. Washington, D.C. And he will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. And if the name was something else, they would take them for other stuff too. Clinton. Yeah. 14. He will take the best of your fields. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his servants. The rest of the sons that haven't by now been found by the arrows following up those chariots. Sixteen. No, 15. He will take the tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and to his servants. Again, the leftovers of your children. Verse 16. He will take your male servants and female servants and his best of your young men and your donkeys and put them to his work. Whose work? You don't know what your governor's government is doing anyway. These days, it started here. He warned them against it here. And still people are Choosing the government over the government of Almighty God. 17. He will take the tents of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day, you will cry out because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves. But Yahweh Elohim will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, no. But there shall be a king over us. And we also Maybe like all the other nations, the Joneses, in other words. And that, that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Wasn't that what Yahweh Elohim was doing already? You wanted to be like everybody else. Verse 21, and when Samuel had heard all the words of the people, he repeated them in the ears of Yahweh Elohim. And Yahweh Elohim said to Samuel, obey their voice and make them this king. Samuel then said to the men of Israel, go every man to his own city. Any questions? Any comments? Yes, sir. Ruby. Going to, uh, trying to see what verse was it. It seems like when they were mentioning uh, figures or sculptures of tumors, a tumor is just a blob. Is there a specific reason why they had to make these images of tumors? I That's know rats is some, mm -hmm. but the That tumor. was their own thing. 
that was the tumors they had all, all over all over their bodies. Mm -hmm. right. Blister. They essentially mm -hmm. a blister. Okay. And they made the blisters according to the word of Yahweh Yahweh Elohim because that's their way of giving him back what he gave. they gave them. Yeah. And even that returned oh, not okay. in a something that was disrespectful, but even the things that you gave us, I give back to you because not because I don't want them, but this is the respect I have for you. Okay. And that's from man's thinking, not something that Yahweh was Yahweh thinking. Yahweh Elohim. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. That's, it was something that just kept on going back and I was trying to read on the small prints to see if there was something that I would capture and, it, and I, I just couldn't get it. But thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Develop. Develop. When, um, I understand what this reads like, but he said he's going to take the people's stuff mm -hmm. and give it to his soldiers. What, what, what is the king doing for you? So you're going to run before the him and get shot to get killed mm -hmm. to, 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 and then they're going to give it, if you're still alive, but... The, the captains and the colonels, whatever it is, that's going on now. Mm -hmm. You go out there yeah. and fight this war. Or what's what, what you getting? I mean, I'm not saying this right. I know mm -hmm. this right. You, I I see it clearly. <laughs> but I'm gonna take. I've seen it clearly money. for a long time. I'm gonna time. take your money, ten percent of what you got. What you got? Mm -hmm. And I. Yep. Exactly. And, and, and then take your your coin. The you best got you too. got. You you got it too. You so, didn't think you had it, but that's it exactly. Right. You get nothing. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm They're so getting everything. What am I? If you really think about it, if you got them in your sights already, notice. The bottom line of each person that gets into office when they get into right. office That's what I'm and when they leave office the all of a sudden the zeros yes. multiply so, obama for instance so, was worth about eh, three hundred thousand a year i won't tell you what he's worth now look it up for yourself and you will be surprised. And I'm gonna take your daughter, your mm -hmm. son, your. Uh, what do you think going on? I, I say that's what they're doing now. I used to have the graph, now but you know. Actually, my mm -hmm. my husband even checked up to see the uh, the value of their work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hundred million. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's per year. And that's Bush. Anybody that you can name, Biden is multiplying while he was in office. And if the world is anything like fair, when they find that laptop, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, this is the pl yes, yes, it is. This is this is this is what they they this is old. But now it's. But now they want you they to not read like that. Mm -hmm. You don't read that. Right. Right. Most churches read the second half. Ten percent. All that stuff is gone. There's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. I'm looking, Ooh. Pastor, at the names mm -hmm. that are called out here, and I looked in the bottom. Ebenezer means stone of help. Mm -hmm. And the Ishkabab means no glory. Mm -hmm. So I'm like. Ishab, Ishabab. Ishabab. Mm -hmm. Ishabab. No glory. No glory. Yep. 
I went to that and went into that a little bit last week. Every name in this book, that's one of the reasons I believe in this book. No other book. Every name in this book exactly encapsulates the character of the plate person named in the book. And even if the character changes from, say, you're standing there, you got called out. Sarah. Sarah I is a little bit different from Sarah. Sarah. Mm -hmm. And the differences are outlined in her life. And every other person in the book, that child, Ishabod, he was named after Samuel had done his things, but the people hadn't gone along. And Ishbad means what? No glory. Mm -hmm. Their glory went away. And there are dozens of examples of that throughout the whole book. Over and over again. Second. Mm -hmm. And you'll see more of it in the remaining parts of this story. I'm going to go through Saul's ex escapades. <laughs> mm. I, I know this is going on. And even David's. I, I know this is going on now. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking when you were the king back taking all your stuff? Mm -hmm. Your kids and your sons and your daughters and, and Oh, you got 20%, I'll take 10. Mm -hmm. And what they basically did in the modern age anyway is this. Whatever you get is mine. No. You'll get it in your 401k. And your 401k is connected to the stock market. As the market prospers, you prosper. And if it don't, and, and, <laughs> and more specifically to your question, if it collapses, your finances do what? Nothing. Nothing. They collapse. collapse. They collapse. They collapse. They collapse. And that's the next chapter. They haven't told you that yet, but that's the next chapter. It, 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 they Not in this book. <laughs> that's already happened here. Mm -hmm. But there's all kinds of little tricks. Now, these people that are running around eschewing the um, values of having gold in your portfolio. Yeah. If the whole thing collapses, uh -huh. they have a rule. I'll find it and show it to you all. If the economy collapses, they can go after your gold also. Oh. Mm -hmm. They can find it. They got stuff to find. We already know the dollar ain't worth too much. <laughs> Would you think somebody would say, let's get rid of this key? Mm hmm That's not going to happen. <laughs> well, <laughs> how did, who does that judge that always says that? That's not going to happen. <laughs> That's not going to happen today. <laughs> not in this court. We ain't going to never, yes. we never have not nothing this. if you keep, mm -hmm. if this king keeps sitting here. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> And now they're taking this book apart. You've got whole churches now. Read the second half and they declare the first half as verboten or forbidden. But if you calculate the times at hand, the only thing that existed in the time of Yeshua was 
the first half. That's the only thing that was codified at the time, is the first half. All the evidence of those reasons is in that first half that they don't read anymore. Babies don't kick butt though. Babies don't kick butt. Keep on living. You'll find out. Very soon, you'll find out when he grows up. And it's not going to be pretty. John. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't help but think of of Eli. Mm -hmm. You know, when 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 Samuel's own sons went bad. Mm -hmm. Even the best of you know, even, even for the best of them, I guess that things go, yep. things go south. I guess. But the thing is, though, by the time they got to Samuel, he had an example. He should have punished his sons. He didn't do it. And that example goes on and on throughout the book. Everybody wants to be special. Mm -hmm. 